Hey everyone, the Game 2K2 here again, and first of all, a very happy 4th of July to all of you. I hope you're enjoying the holidays. Uh, and I'm here today to give my thoughts on the brand new Spider-Man movie, simply titled The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, long story short about the plot, you know, it just goes through the origins of Spider-Man. Uh, we get to see Peter Parker as a kid, and we get to see his parents leave him with his aunt and uncle. He eventually becomes a teenager, and of course, during a tour of Oscorp, he sneaks off into like this um, experiment that's going on with spiders, and he's bitten by one of the spiders, and he eventually, of course, turns into Spider-Man. Uh, he meets a scientist there, Dr. Connors, who is uh, experimenting on regrowing limbs, and while doing a human testing on himself, he turns himself into the lizard, and then we have Spider-Man versus the lizard for pretty much the rest of the film. So that's pretty much the plot in a nutshell. Um, and to be honest, when it comes to The Amazing Spider-Man before its release, this is probably um, the lowest expectations I've ever had for a comic book film, period. Um, I had a lot of negative thoughts about the movie before its release. I thought the reboot was coming along way too soon, and I didn't find that Spider-Man 3 was so bad that they had to reboot the franchise. Um, so yeah, I was a little worried. Um, the casting had me a little worried, especially with uh, Peter Parker getting uh, taken over by Andrew Garfield. Um, um, but for the most part, you know, my expectations being low, you know, I was proved wrong on almost everything. Uh, the movie is so well written, so well acted for the most part, that it's actually, I think, better than the, uh, last two movies were, you know, two and three. Um, Spider-Man 1 I'll always love, and I think that, to me, that's still the best Spider-Man film. Um... But with this one, you know, it just came off so much better than I thought it would. Um, granted, some of the storyline doesn't work so much. Um, there are a lot of stalling moments, and you can kind of tell when the movie does stall, especially with the audience, like the romance moments between uh, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. Those go on for, like, ever, and you can actually hear kind of the annoyance in the crowd in the theater when those scenes were going on because, you know, they had a lot of... Uh, I think, kind of poorly written dialogue for some of the romance. I thought it came off a little weird. Um, but I like the story of Dr. Connors. I like the story of Peter Parker in general. And the whole parents thing. You know, there was a lot of worry over how Peter's parents play a role in this film. Um, a lot of people thought that wasn't going to pay off so well, but it did. It paid off really well, and I was really pleasantly surprised. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much the story. I, I like the story for the most part. Um, Acting-wise, a heck of a lot better than um, most uh, comic book films, even though there are some uh, poorly acted moments. Like I said, the romance um, seems to falter a bit, especially for Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone, who plays uh, Gwen Stacy. Um, those two seem to struggle a little bit with the romance part, and really Emma Stone is Gwen Stacy... Uh, I thought was kind of a weird choice to begin with. You know, she's a fine actress and she's very beautiful, but I don't think she, uh, I don't think she uh, fit the role as well as I thought she would. You know, I thought she came off a little bit too uh, stiff in the part. Um, but Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker, Spider-Man. You know, except for the whole romance bit. You know, I'll, I'll stop talking about that. Um, he does really well. Um, you know, Tobey Maguire did such a great job for, you know, Sam Raimi's franchise, and, you know, I honestly think that Tobey Maguire's kind of been wronged, you know, by critics and fans by saying he was a poor choice. I thought he did a really good job with the part, and in, in my view, Andrew Garfield had a, really a lot to live up to when it came to that part, and I think he nailed it. Uh, granted, I was a little stunned that they chose someone who was a little bit on the thin side for Spider-Man, and, um, you know, but he pulled it off. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's, uh, uh, Aunt May and Uncle Ben. You know, Aunt May's taken over by, uh, Sally Field. And she, in my, in my opinion, I thought she stole the show. You know, she's not in 
uh, as many scenes as the main characters, but her acting, you know, she's such such a great actress, and she just completely, uh, I think, outdid the cast, even though the rest of the cast was really good. Um, but Martin Sheen as Ben Parker, he kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting an actor like him to be in this movie, especially given his uh, track record. Um, but he is another fine actor, and he did a great job with the role. Um, and the rest of the cast in general is just really great. And I cannot pronounce the name of the actor who plays uh, Dr. Connors. Uh, Riz Evans? Riz, Riz Evans? I think he's called Riz, Riz Evans. <laughs> um, never mind the name. He also does a great job. Um, and I really like the portrayal of the lizard in this uh, movie. And, you know, it could have been a, a joke the way that character... Uh, was brought out, but you know what? He pulled it off, and I thought he made the character a lot better. And he, and I think it really was his performance that made the lizard um, great on screen, because really the lizard looked kind of weird in CG. I didn't like the CG design of the character himself, but I liked the actor's uh, performance. I thought that saved it. Um, as we're talking about CG, you know, let's go into the action and the... Uh, and the CGI, um, the action is really good, especially good on the you know surround sound. Now, the action is pretty similar to what Sam Raimi did, uh, for the most part. You know, the Spider-Man stunts and all that stuff. In fact, the swinging Spider-Man swinging CG is very similar to Sam Raimi's work. In fact, a lot of shots actually looked completely identical. Um, but uh, with the action, it sounded so great in the theaters. Not only did it look great on screen, but they really upped the noise for the surround sound. I mean, it sounded great on in the theaters. Um, the CGI kind of goes back and forth. Um, again, you know, the lizard was not exactly the greatest looking character from a CG standpoint. I thought he looked a little off on screen. Um, especially with the face. You know, I didn't like the mouth movement. I didn't like uh, the face in general. The rest looked okay, um, but the face kind of got to me. Uh, the CG version of Spider-Man um, in this movie um, went off pretty well. Um, much more realistic than the CG was, you know, for the second and third film for the character, and, and especially the first from Sam Raimi's. Uh, films, and that was a big step up. He looked, he, the character looked really realistic when swinging, especially for a lot of the night shots. That that, that went really well. Um, and last but not least, what I'll discuss is the look of Spider-Man himself. Uh, a lot of mixed opinions over the uh, um, look of Spider-Man when leaving theaters. A lot of people liked the new costume. A lot of people didn't. Um, I liked it for the most part. You know, Sam Raimi's costume for Spider-Man was just perfect. Um, that, that was tough to top. If, if there was anything from Sam Raimi's series, the costume for Spider-Man was exactly what everyone expected it to look like. F you know, It looked just like the comics. It looked just like the animated series. It was perfect. Um, with this movie, they were obviously going for realism, like someone had actually designed it themselves. Uh, so the costume does have a few flaws in areas. Uh, it looks a little bit on the thin... Um, scrawny side when compared to the Sam Raimi series, but that makes it more realistic. It, it makes it look man-made and not made by you know a professional movie costumer, and that's why I like the new Spider-Man costume. Do I like it as much as Sam Raimi's costume? Yeah, no, you know I I, I like the costume of Sam Raimi's too. I think it's a tie between the two in my in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it, you know, an 8.5 out of 10. You know, it does have its slow moments. I think the romance kind of falls flat on its face, but, you know, the rest of the movie is really solid. Um, is it the best Spider-Man movie ever made? I don't think so. To me, that still belongs to the first movie by Sam Raimi. Um, but, you know what? It's a great movie. For those, you know, who were against a reboot, I think they'll be very surprised. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you next time.